Today I'm going to talk a little bit about gardening versus weeds, specifically noxious weeds. Again, I graduated from Kansas State University in 1980, so I've been uh, working on gardening in Colorado since 1991, and it's it's a challenge at, at uh, Colorado uh, in as a whole, but especially here in Douglas County when the average uh, frost-free date is May 23rd. So what soils are you uh, planting into? Well, you have to plan for what is there. And uh, when they built my subdivision in Castlewood Ranch, um, the backfill was, was a heavy clay and it's uh, not very conducive to gardening. So um, we, uh, and there are many different ways to research what is on your site but what was on your site may not be uh, what's there now because, you know, for example, there's a lot of construction in Douglas County, as most of you are aware, and then Castlewood Ranch and founders and places uh, that they've been recently developing, um, they've dug down six foot or more in some places. So uh, what, what are they replacing the soil is a big option and question as far as what is going to be growable in your site. And according to the 2010 uh, U.S. Census, 81% of the nation's population lives in urban areas, and in most of those areas, the current soil information is in incomplete, outdated, or non-existent, and the soils in these areas have been so mo modified that any previous maps no longer provide correct information. And uh, their USDA has even come out with a urban soil primer to figure out what to do on your site and how to improve it. And here's a couple of websites that you could use to um, research that more completely. So how big is your lot? That depth of the topsoil replaced, again, will dictate how much soil amendments need to be added was at least six inches replaced. Kind of hard to get your turf grass to grow if you don't have something like that there. Um, remember, topsoil is sometimes less desirable here than um, the subsoils of Kansas or Texas or other parts of the U.S. Again, the frost-free date is uh, average of, of uh, May 23rd. Castle Rock's at 6,205 feet officially. Um, and 22-year... Rain average is 14.56 inches, uh, rainfall equivalent. On the Highlands Ranch Western End at uh, Castler Water tr Treatment Plant is 17.41 inches of rain equivalent a year. And Parker is uh, a little bit lower, obviously, than Castle Rock at 13.41 inches of rain equivalent. So it's not as good a place to garden in, as Castle Rock slightly. Um, monument there at the uh, south end of the county, you're at about 7,400 feet and 18.55 inches of rain equivalent. So um, you can add topsoil or you can add uh, special garden soil from Lowe's or Home Depot or, or wherever you want to uh, go for that. Um, mostly it's a combination of peat and and uh, manure and other products. You can also buy it in bulk at my old house here in Castle Rock. We had two uh, tandem loads of enriched topsoil brought in for the front yard and uh, it uh, grew turf much better. Many gardeners are using raised beds and this is uh, mine that I inherited with the house. I'm in the process of rebuilding it using uh, redwood um, two by sixes and two by eights. Um, redwood being a natural product has less tendency to possibly have any heavy metals leaching into the soil. And uh, black plastic is often used as a mulch in between your, your um, plants that you uh, plant into the area. Obviously, uh, those that you plant as seeds uh, will need to have the whole row uncovered. And I believe that drip irrigation is the way to go. It minimizes what 
uh, water evaporation you might encounter and uh, plastic mulch will extend the growing season and heat the soil up quicker so you'll have a better result for your vegetables. It gives a new constructor an option of adding whatever soils work for them. So raised beds are definitely an option that helps in that regard too. But the invasive weeds or noxious weeds are what plants that don't stay where we planted them, which uh, was alluded to earlier in regards to um, escaped ornamentals being a, a major problem in the uh, U.S. and non, especially Colorado as well. Non-native aggressive plants that uh, spread by roots and seeds. I was once asked to go back to that. I was on, once asked about um, yellow toad flax, and somebody had planted it uh, years ago, uh, buying it as butter and eggs, and they wondered what to do with it because it had taken over their rock garden. And I said. Uh, get the Roundup out, and you're going to probably have to spray it more than once, but that's the best thing is spray it with the Roundup and then start over with a different plant. Some of the noxious weeds are poisonous to humans and livestock, so that's something else to be aware of for the, from the noxious weed standpoint. But gardening, uh, you know, as far as Colorado noxious weeds, uh, we're looking at non-native plants only, so most of the time you won't have them in a garden, but I have encountered them. I have encountered them, you know, seed blown in, obviously from the thistles. Um, Canada thistle has been one that I've found in my garden. Um, and so sometimes you'll have to use a herbicide, especially once they've become established. Field bindweed will take over. Uh, even though it's a C-list weed, you need to uh, use a herbicide in most cases. And uh, again, lo list A noxious weeds in Colorado, there are 25 species, rare or not found in the state yet. And by law, those are to be eliminated. So they can only be uh, controlled by digging, pulling, or herbicides, and uh, depending on what the biology of the plant is. And the list B species, there are 38 species. Uh, some of them are rare and some of them are regionally common. And by law, they are to be eliminated or controlled depending on their rarity. Uh, for example, uh, the plant leafy spurge is common in Douglas County, but in Chafee County, they could probably cover uh, one, the one patch they have with a pickup truck. So, um, and again, sea list weeds are to control at your own discretion. I've also seen um, mullein in my uh, garden uh, depends on where you got your topsoil too for sometimes. So in Douglas County, these are common bee list weeds that you'll probably find encroaching into your yard. And uh, the first four, Dalmatian toad flax, yellow toad flax, Canada thistle and leafy spurge are perennial plants, meaning they will come back from the roots and they will spread by roots. They're, they're uh, creeping perennials. And again, field bindweed is a creeping perennial. And uh, Kansas did a study years ago that said that the seeds would last 50 to 100 years. Um, and common mullein says 80 to 100 years. Uh, I take back the 100 years on the bindweed. I don't remember anybody ever saying 100 years on bindweed, but still, it is a, a monumental um, situation. So we have... 12 B-list weeds in Douglas County that are common. But how can you help yourself and your neighborhood and the county? Plant only non-invasive species when you acquire plants. Remove invasive species from your land or your garden. Learn the noxious weeds for the area. Remove seeds stuck to your clothes or gear. Wash mud and dirt off your vehicle before entering public lands. Here's an idea. Wash them off before you enter your garden and after you enter your garden so you'll reduce any um, tracking of, of weeds in and out of your garden. Stay on established roads and hike or designated trails when you are hiking. Uh, and I know we have a lot of people hike in Douglas County and we have lots of dog parks. Um, be aware that you may accidentally pick up some weeds 
or somebody may have accidentally dropped some weeds in those areas. So be aware of that. Clean your shoes when you leave the area. Do not trade plants with other gardeners. And don't pick up an un, the unknown plant thinking it looks like it's very beautiful. I had a person call when I was uh, president of the Colorado Weed Management Association several years ago. She was complaining about myrtle spurge causing her to have dermatitis and uh, come to find out she had taken it out of the um, motel landscaping that she, where she stayed in Durango intending to plant it in New Mexico where she lived. And so she was self-inflicting herself in that regard. And uh, um, unfortunately, we have our, our own worst enemies sometimes. But you can help educate your community and your um, personal contacts and garden clubs, et cetera. And I am available to uh, come and specifically talk to those areas uh, at your club or, or garden um, group. My first f sighting of absinthe wormwood was call, um, confirmed by my colleagues via the internet with uh, digital photos. So you can take digital photos and email them to me and my email will be uh, posted uh, at the end of the, the uh, discussion here. Uh, tansy ragwort that I thought was um, on some of our property turned to be out to be a native form. And few people know every weed or plant in the U.S. And, uh, you know, the, the people that know those are botanists usually. And they would ask uh, Colorado State University or another university or myself how to kill them because their forte is identifying those plants. I use the annual research from uh, CSU in the Pacific Northwest, uh, Wyoming, Utah, and Montana for my go-to. Uh, labels change, so at least before you go buy a new batch of herbicide, verify that it was the one you want. And these are some of the re reference books that I use to um, identify weeds and identify how to kill them. And unfortunately, uh, un almost anything can be purchased on the internet. And this was a recent research uh, that I did by, with Google and uh, came up with an Amazon search. And uh, there are several noxious weeds that are still being sold via the internet. Sometimes they'll honor the fact that Colorado considers some of these plants noxious and not sell them to you because you live in Colorado, but there is no guarantee of that either. So competitive vegetation is a must in regards to noxious weeds, whether it be in your garden or your, your lawn. And so you need to be out there um, you know, controlling it with black plastic or one of my least favorite things is pulling the weeds. But uh, in your garden, you've got to keep those um, unwanted plants out of your area. And, you know, really in a garden, in the area that you want uh, corn, uh, a bean is a weed. So um, <clears throat> non-noxious weeds are just taking it a step further. And again, yellow toad flax wants to dominate the countryside. Uh, Dr. Beck said something about leafy spurge being the toughest weed to control, but I'm not sure that that's true anymore. Uh, got biocontrols working very well in the county, and uh, yellow toad flax is still, um, in my opinion, the hardest one to control, the most expensive one to control. So there are use precautions for each of these because there are some residuals that la last in the soil for a time and you could have issues with that. So uh, depending on the herbicide that you're going to use on your uh, turf or on your garden, you got to read the label to know what to look for as far as um, damage to the plants or um, again, don't use clippings off of some of these in your garden itself or you could end up killing your vegetables. And uh, some of them are labeled for specific grasses and, and some are not. 
and a hand can is very good for small areas like uh, the neighbor's A-list Myrtle Spurge. And uh, backpack is for larger areas. Uh, contractors often use ATVs or golf carts, and uh, not all Roundup bottles are the same. Um, Roundup Super Concentrate uh, versus Roundup 365 versus Roundup Extended. Um, some of them can be used in the garden on your um, bindweed problems, but some of them cannot because they will kill your vegetables as well. And sometimes it is needed, depending on what you're fighting. Uh, bindweed, you would have to pull it every week um, throughout the growing season. In conclusion, early detection, rapid response, uh, cooperation between your neighbors, um, and good management practices. And, and, you know, in the case of grazing, which isn't necessarily something you worry about when you're gardening, but that can issue uh, additional problems. And uh, you probably will need to amend the soil for your garden and consult with uh, us or a CSU extension, and they will give you uh, answers to your questions. And uh, here's my email address, or you can call and set up a time for a free site visit and a free um, weed plan. And if you want to spray your own weeds, uh, we also have a free calibration so that you know how to get that one ounce per acre over that 43,000 square feet. That's a, a challenge that most people don't even think about. Thank you, and that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Jonathan. We have some time for questions. If you want to put your questions in the chat, I will read them aloud. Our first question, Jonathan, is from Laura. Are there are any of the herbicides usable on, quote, organic fields, i.e. for cattle, goats, etc.? There are herbicides, uh, primarily uh, things like um, high concentration vinegar um, that are organically labeled. R Roundup is not, uh, 240 is not. Those are probably two of the most commonly used uh, in turf and, and ornamental uh, and gardening situations. Um, but uh, you're much more restricted on what is available with organic. And I would check with, if you want to have all the uh, information on organic, I would check with the um, Colorado Department of Agriculture's website. They have all the uh, different organic pesticides listed there. Thank you, Jonathan. Another question from Carrie. Do I really need to cut down my two large established Russian olive trees in the downtown Castle Rock area? You know, that's a good question. And uh, I have uh, had discussions with the Colorado Department of Agriculture in regards to that. Yes, they are listed on the B list for noxious weeds. Uh, we have a couple on our uh, property uh, at... Um, industrial way that we've been watching very closely for the last several years. Um, and some subdivisions, for example, Sierra Vista subdivision in the Parker area, <clears throat> large areas were planted with uh, Russian olive for windbreaks. And uh, in visiting with the Department of Ag, I said, uh, I don't think anybody has a political clout to take that on. Unless you could go out and say, okay, I've got a coupon for a free eight foot tree from Lowe's or Home Depot or Pine Lane Nursery, then you're not going to be able to do that or you will be looking for a job. And um, so, yes, don't watch it. If it spreads, cut off the any suckers that might occur, but we've not been observing any suckers in, in our area that we're looking at out at the industrial way, I would say don't worry about it, but don't plant any new ones. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, there are no more questions at this time. 